Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. I noticed this, and I, I had noticed a different reference to this, I think on Sunday. But this is from RT, Rockefeller Oil Dynasty to Divest from Fossil Fuels. I, I find this interesting, and I uh, make note of it because... I believe that the cabal is getting the idea that we are not fully buying into their program uh, in the way that's easiest for them. So they are going to uh, try to make some changes and keep us in their program. And there are a, a few different examples of that, and I don't, I don't have links for them, but I've mentioned before trying to direct the push for organics and, and natural foods uh, into the climate change camp and many other means that they're, they're using, they're trying to use our momentum and our emotional currency to accomplish their goals. And while this, is, this sounds great on the surface, we want the future of alternative energies. We don't want the Rockefellers to control alternative energies into the foreseeable future and beyond. Uh, what we're going to have to do is be very aware of what is happening and how they are trying to manipulate us and what corners they're trying to push us into so that we can avoid going into those corners and we can hopefully avoid this increasing in the future from zero hedge. Welcome to the oligarchy. U.S. leads the developed world in low-wage jobs. This, this is the corner that they're pushing us into. They are trying to deprive us of the benefits of our labors. And, again, this, this is something that we can resist. And there are many ways that we can resist the evil intentions against us. I was inspired by this over the weekend. Illinois state cop loses temper on camera as man exercises constitutional right during checkpoint. It's worth watching this short video. This this man who was stopped by the police really both keeps his cool and holds his ground. And I, kudos to him. I think he handled this situation beautifully. And this is an example for how we all can be moving through this control system to just say, no, I, this is unlawful. I have my rights. I don't need to tell you why I'm here. I don't need to tell you what, where I'm going. I'm invoking the Fifth Amendment, and again, it's, I can't do justice. It's, it's really helpful just to watch this. Very inspiring. And another way that we resist, I believe, is through having a relationship with God, who what the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I've connected with a few people uh, just over the last few days and been really blessed. I think people are becoming generally more aware of the control systems. But I have encountered Christians who are becoming more aware of uh, healing and the reality that Jesus uh, fully accomplished on the cross everything necessary for us to live in very close communion with God. And Adam walked with God in the garden and talked with God in the garden. And we have that ability through the work of Jesus on the cross. And this is just one website. I've mentioned the heart code before. And even specifically what is really kind of triggering people to seek God in some of these ways uh, is a, a quest for physical healing and knowing that there are 
better ways than what is presented to us by the pharmaceutical industries and the, the big corporate hospitals. And people are, are seeking healing on a fundamental human level. And that really does begin with having, I want to say having the heart healed, but I don't mean that physically. I mean having our, rest, our, our relationship with God healed so that we know him as our source. And once we are in communion with him and with each other, there's really not a whole lot that, you know, God, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm obviously not referring to organized churches here. I'm referring to people loving God and working through understanding that the issues they've had in their lives are not, God does not want those things to block them from having a relationship with him. And uh, I, I noticed something interesting in a novel that I'm reading, in E.M. Forster, Howard's End, it's a, it was written, uh, I think, in the 1800s, maybe. But, and this is the good news of the day, uh, that we, we can choose to live in different ways. We don't have to live in fear. And I, I'm going to read this paragraph, and then I'll comment on it. Helen, after a decent pause, continued her account of Staten, how quickly a situation changes. In June, she had been in a crisis. Even in November, she could blush and be unnatural. Now it was January, and the whole affair lay forgotten. Looking back on the past six months, Margaret realized the chaotic nature of our daily life and its difference from the orderly sequence that has been fabricated by historians. Actual life is full of false clues and signposts that lead nowhere. With infinite effort, we nerve ourselves for a crisis that never comes. The most successful career must show a waste of strength that might have removed mountains, and the most unsuccessful is not that of the man who is taken unprepared but of him who has prepared and is never taken. On a tragedy of that kind, our national morality is duly silent. It assumes that preparation against danger is in itself a good, and that men, like nations, are the better for staggering through life fully armed. The tragedy of preparedness has scarcely been handled, save by the Greeks. Life is indeed dangerous, but not in the way morality would have us believe. It is indeed unmanageable, but the essence of it is not a battle. It is unmanageable because it is a romance, and its essence is romantic beauty. And I was really inspired by that. It reminded me of uh, what John Lennon wrote, that life is what happens to us when we're making other plans. I, I think many times we worry too much, we have too much fear, and that is uh, that worry and that fear are used against us to control and manipulate us. And if we can uh, just be aware of what life really is, which is relationships with people, and uh, showing kindness, and really insisting on liberty. Uh, God gave us free will, that was his gift to us. And it's up to us to defend that free will and exercise that free will. Uh, under common law, of course, doing no harm. But that is our legacy. That is our gift from God. And as is healing and uh, means to a relationship with him through Jesus. With that, I thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, hoping that you will love one another, that you will uh, value relationships and time, that you will take care and insist on liberty.